Yeah, Mark Chinook has the introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, we return to the action here inside Resorts World Las Vegas. This is boxing. This is top rank presented by Hall of Fame boxing promoter, Mr. Bob Arum, brought to you by Samaritan, starring Sylvester Stallone coming to Prime Video August 26th. Bud Light, the official beer of celebrations, Boost Mobile Money is Power, and Die Hard Batteries and Advance Auto Parts. This bout is scheduled for six rounds in the junior welterweight division. Our judges at ringside, Tim Cheatham, Lisa Giampa, and Dave Moretti. And the man in charge at the sound of the bell, Mr. Kenny Bayless. Introducing first out of the blue corner, he weighed in at 140.6 pounds, wearing black trunks with white trim. He brings a record of six victories with only one defeat into the ring. Four of those victories coming by way of knockout from San Bernardino, California, Esteban Stonehands Munoz. Introducing out of the red corner, he weighed in at 140.8 pounds, wearing red trunks with blue and white trim. He brings a perfect record into the ring. Seven fights, seven victories. Two of those victories coming by way of knockout. From Caguas, Puerto Rico, Omar, New Era, Rosario. Okay, gentlemen, trunks are good on both sides. Gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. Again, I want to caution to keep this fight clean at all times, protect yourself at all times, and what I say you must obey. Good luck, touch them up. Trainer Henry Ramirez, who's well known in Southern California, the Inland Empire, he used to train Chris Ariola, was telling me a story about this young man. He says he's, he's very quiet, he was training in my gym, probably been there for about six months. I'd ask the other kids, hey, what's his name? They didn't know. Yeah. Ask him his name, nobody would do it. One day I saw him in there sparring Ryan Garcia when they were both amateurs. I said, let me go ask this kid his name because he held his own. <laughs> and from then on, he took him under his wings. It's awesome. That's a great story, Bernardo. I always say be careful, be careful of the quiet ones, the ones that don't speak a whole <laughs> heck of a lot, that soak up a whole lot of knowledge. He don't speak a lot, so, ooh, nice body shot right there. Yeah, Rosario, he said, I know I'm in for a fight from Munoz. He says, I'm happy with my performances. He only has two knockouts and seven victories, but five of his seven wins have come against unbeaten opponents, so he has been matched tough, but he says, I'm looking to settle down a little bit more, set on my punches, and generate more power, and he's doing that with a looping right and a left hook. That left hook. About 10 seconds ago, hurt Munoz. You saw him back up to the ropes. It's a small little level change. And Rosario came up with the left hook, catching Munoz. Right on the temple. Rosario is consistent, just a balanced boxer. He's gonna wait for Munoz to take the initiative and then try to counter punch him, but. That's a dangerous proposition because it sounds like Munoz has some pop, but there comes a right hand of Rosario. Rosario right now, is, he's choosing to stand his ground. Munoz, both these guys, they're getting right after it, but Rosario, he's, he's looking to set up Munoz. He's looking for that left hook. Munoz, just, just a second ago, 10 seconds ago, he, he actually, there he is. He made the adjustment. Now he's, he's looking for that left hook. He knows it's coming. As you see, he got under it. See that solid jab, though, from Rosario. Understands that's the foundation for opening up the defense of Munoz. Munoz now tries to go downstairs with the right. Mm. See, that's a smart adjustment right there from, from Munoz right there. That right hand down to the body, that's going to keep that hand home. That left hook's going to stay home because... 
that's the shot that he knows that Rosario is trying to land. So if he comes around to the body, if you don't protect your body, it's going to weaken you over time. Munoz is on a four-fight win streak since his lone loss in September of 2020. Wants to make it five against the undefeated Omar Rosario, whose original trainer was Miguel Cotto's father. Uh, work out, As work they exchange out. here at Stop the end play. of the first round. Clean. Let's listen in to Jose Santiago for his instructions for Rosario. How do you feel? You feel good. Hey, you can't let him land that shot to the body. Hey, you have to impress these judges. When he's coming close, you have to take half a step back and then try to, to land that straight shot above, above his jab. One downstairs, two to the head, and then pop a big shot. He's taking shots. Hey, when he opens up, take advantage, but don't lunge in. You got to go laterally. You feel good? Yeah. Take him, take him throughout the fight. Everything's good. Hey, be careful with this jab. And more importantly, watch out for his body shots because that's where he's trying to catch you. Bernardo soon alongside the canvas. former the world canvas. champion Timothy Bradley. Yes, sir. Off the canvas. You know, with seven, seven fights, Rosario, great, great technique. You know, always look for technique in, in young fighters. You know, it's important to have. It's one of the most important qualities in boxing. Having good technique. Hey, Tommy's he's working on, you know, the defense is always a primary focus, not getting hit. But he says, I want to add more combinations to my game because I've noticed that I'll throw one or two shots but not follow it up. So I'm going to try to do that. And Munoz is going to try to make it hard on him, Tim. Munoz is, is taking what's, what's given. And it's that flank right there on the left side. You see the redness on Rosario's body <laughs> from that right hand. There it is again. Don't hold him. Munoz can't miss with that shot. Mm, nice right to the body once again. Need a guard change from Rosario. That's what he needs to do. He needs to go into the Philly shell. If he goes into the Philly shell, that's going to be able to block that shot of Munoz. He just got to be careful getting caught up top with the right hand. The Philly shell is the right hand up. The, the lead hand goes across the body. Floyd Mayweather was known for using that. Nice lead right from Rosario. You see a little bit of blinking from the left eye of Munoz. Sometimes a guy gets hit there and all of a sudden it, it's irritated. I don't know if that's happened to you, Tim, but. Even thumbed in the eye, yeah, yeah. That, that, it's, <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> Getting thumbed in the eye, seriously, man. And you can see the swelling on the, the right eye now of Munoz. And it's blinking with both eyes and Rosario says, you want to close your eyes? Let me land the left hook. Beautiful stick right there. And the stick is the jab. That's the longest weapon to the target that you have. Nice counter. That time from, from Munoz countering the jab. He nice. timed it perfectly. Yeah, and then he went to the body. And here you see Rosario trying to throw two three-punch combinations. Good defense from Munoz keeping that right hand up. This is as much a chess match as it is a fight. That right had bad intentions from Munoz. This fight's taking place at junior welterweight. Our Mark Griego has an update on this very hot division. Here you go, fellas. Jack Catterall remains Josh Taylor's white whale. That's the fight Taylor wants, and Catterall's left his 
previous promoter, Pro Bellum, to make it happen. In the meantime, however, the IBF has ordered a purse fit for Taylor to fight their mandatory, Jeremiah Ponce, 20-0 out of Argentina. In other words, Taylor will have to give up his IBF belt or work out a deal with Ponce before he can fight Catterall again on the WBC side. Jose Zapata and Regis Proge have until August 30 to work out a deal for their title fighter. They go to purse with. Interesting question is, who's going to televise it? Ramirez, his manager, uh, Rick Marigian, says his guy will have a shot at the winner of that fight, but he may want the winner tonight, assuming it's Tiafimo even more. In other news, two guys unranked by any other organization will fight for the WBA go, strap go. on the undercard of Adrian Broner's latest comeback fight, August All 20. Right. Fellas? Is that a regular? Is that a real a super champion? We'll <laughs> find that out eventually. Tim, <laughs> but 140 division, obviously you know well because you were a great champion at 140 pounds. You ranked all the divisions, and of the seven I did, team, man. you, you I put did. this division at number four with all the talent that's there. I mean, look, look, if you look at the reason why I did that is because <laughs> you didn't see. Did you see any pound for pound guys on there? On Josh that Taylor was until the, and the Catterall yeah, fight. Exactly, yeah. but you don't see any. I mean, it's a hot division, but there's no like big names or pound for pound guys in the division. But as far as the, the overall <laughs> talent, <laughs> no doubt about it. See, I, I think no doubt about a, a lot it. of the other weight classes are top heavy, and then there's a huge gap. And I think here it's like maybe no A pluses, but there's a lot of A minuses and B pluses in that division. Man, you giving out A minuses like <laughs> like they hotcakes. I don't know about A minuses. You don't I think was... Pro Grace could be a, a, an A minus? Uh, yeah. He's I mean, a, he's inactive a little he's, bit. He's a, he, Pro Gay is a, it's a fantastic Matthias fighter, man. His power is. is A+, plus, but I don't know about the rest of the two. Yeah, exactly. But, I mean, Pro Gray is a fantastic fighter. Um, I, I'm not giving him an A- minus until he give me, give me another world championship. All right. Professor Tim, hard grader, as you can expect. Especially because he knows what this weight class is all about. I'm, you just, got I'm just saying, eight, eight minus. You got to be a bad. You got to be the baddest man in the division to get the eight minus or eight. Period. Rosario going to the body now, switching things up on Esteban Munoz. This is this is a high pace chess match by both of these guys. They're landing some some big shots on one another, and you can see some minor adjustments by both men. See, the uppercut starting to be a, a weapon for Munoz. <laughs> Slipping into inside. Inside slip, getting his head off the line and coming right up the middle with an uppercut. This is the third consecutive six-rounder for Omar Rosario, who you see now, as you mentioned, Tim, that mouse under the right eye of Munoz. Ooh, Munoz is looking for that counter right. Rosario obliges him with a nice stick. <laughs> that was nice. That was a nice setup right there. Now it came off the feint right there from Munoz. He fainted Rosario. Rosario froze, didn't know what to do, and then Munoz took off with a combination real quick and said, oh, okay, you're not going to do anything. Well, <laughs> eat these. Yeah, the lost art of the feint, as you were mentioning in the Charlie Sheehy fight, how effective it would have been. Oh, yeah. And yet here it was effective for Munoz. Another close round between the young Mexican-American and Puerto Rican fighter. We're listening to Henry Ramirez, who didn't know this kid's name for six months, but he knows him now. Let's hear what he's at to say. There for the taking, bro. You've got to pick it up. You've got to be more active. You're not being active enough. If you put punches together, you're doing fine. He always We know the fight the I just want to mention. I heard you that fight. So listen, bro. Get back to the body. You stop going to the body, bro. Step in. So you're going to have to step on in. You're too content to work in, with working spots, bro. Push him back. Push him back, right? Step on in and fucking make it a dog fight. You got to work. But get back to his body, bro. You didn't go to the body at all this round. All right? Listen, you're in the rounds, bro. You're in this fight. Now you got to go win it. You got three more rounds. You got to pick it up. Some more activity. Deep breath. How you feeling? Hey, you busy, man. I really liked what Henry Round Ramirez four, did on, pick up. beyond got the pick instructions when Dr. Ober came up. The first thing it is, like, kind of walked, kind of brushed him off and says, look, he blinks. He always blinks because that was a concern of the doctor <laughs> thinking, hey, maybe he got, uh, you know, a thumb in the eye. He's injured. I, I just really thought he handled that very well. 
That's what experienced coaches do. They know exactly why the doctor was coming in the <laughs> ring. You see the little gas or so on the right eye, I believe, of Munoz. Doctor was coming in, check it out, and the trainer did a good job in keeping him away. Shoot him away, like, don't even come in here. Let me do my, my job. And Rosario doing the job with the jab here in the fourth round. That was great instructions right there in Munoz's corner, telling his opposition, or excuse me, telling his opponent, or his fighter to, you know, pick up the Ooh. pace and go down to the body. That was a nice counter right to the body Work from out. Munoz. Stop, stop. Step back clean. Step back clean. Yeah, the fight is, is here for both guys. I thought Munoz had a, had a good round in the last round. And this round right now, starting off in the first minute or so, that jab, like you said, Bernardo, of Rosario is doing some damage. Mm. Up, up, bring him up. Munoz trying to protect that right eye, but nothing better for him than to throw punches like he does there and catch Rosario coming in. There's that stick from Rosario. Freezes Munoz when he throws that. Yeah, it's coming at the same speed, though, from Rosario. It can be countered with the right hand. Munoz just has to anticipate it and see if he can catch on. Watch your hands. Nice body shot from Munoz. Work out, work I agree out, with out. Henry Ramirez and his assessment that Munoz is in every round, but is he doing enough at times? Ooh. That is a nice left uppercut from Munoz. That inside slip is so sneaky. <laughs> with the jab, you know, you're taught to slip to the outside, but man, when you switch it up and go against the grain and come inside and come up the middle, ooh, it's so beautiful by Munoz. There's that one-two from Omar Rosario. Mm. All right, work out, work out. Looks like a headbutt there from Munoz and Rosario. They're fighting now in close quarters as we are two thirds of the way into this fight. The fans are getting excited here at Resorts World. Things heating up between Rosario and Munoz. That eye continues to swell as both fighters go back to their respective corners. Tim, anytime you see a wrinkle in a young fighter that is opposite of what people expect, that means he's going to be successful. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, you know, you want to look for, I look for certain qualities in fighters. Of course, you got to have the mental toughness, you got to have the focus. Um, you look at their skill set, you see what they can do. Can they fight on the inside? Can they, can they fight on the outside? Where do they look uncomfortable? You know, for Rosario, I would say, combinations kind of bother him a bit you can push him back you can force him back let's check out this looking uppercut real quick this is a shot i'm talking about going against the grain right here slipping inside of the jab instead of outside to land this uppercut this is beautiful right here you work that over and over and over in training camp you know on the hand mitts with your trainer Great way to put it to use in this fight. That's the Marshawn Lynch of shots. If you do it over and over and you over. run through a guy's <laughs> face. <laughs> through it. <laughs> and so they don't want it no more, right? <laughs> and we're just here so we don't get fined. <laughs> Quick combination from Rosario trying to open up the defense of Esteban Munoz. See that single jab, single jab, single jab. You know, you, there's no level changes really with the jab or anything. I mean, it's, it's so easy to predict the jab is coming from Rosario. Just waiting on Munoz to see it encounter. See Rosario able to land that overhand right. 
You see the damage he's done with the jab and the left hook on the right eye of mm -hmm. Munoz, but they've done a really good job in his corner and not allowing that to close up. Mm -hmm. Now Munoz is starting to be a, a spectator in this, in this fight right now, losing his concentration, not doing what he was doing in the beginning of this fight. Now Rosario is just taking advantage of, of him slowing down, slowing down his offense, yeah. thinking a little bit too much. And that jab with the level change going up and down with it set up a nice left hook for Rosario. See, when you, when you, when you get caught sleeping or you fall asleep, you want to step back and you want to get some space and you want to restart. Restart your system. Step back, dance around a little bit, clear your head, and say, okay, now I, I got to come back and do something. That's what Munoz needs to do right now because he's getting beat to the punch by Rosario. Mm. You see that looping right hand lands on the shoulder of Rosario. Ooh, nice, nice counter, counter shoulder yes. roll. We're going to see a lot of that in our main event, the shoulder roll from Teofimo Lopez. Nice right hand counter. Return counter from Munoz. I don't think Munoz could really afford to take this round off, and it seems like he did for the most part. Round five coming to an end. Everything leads to Teofimo Lopez's return. Now he's doing it 140 pounds. He's not the only fighter coming up in weight. There's Ryan Garcia and a cast of characters. No matter how many of these guys they push in there in the undisputed list, and no one did it like I did. And I will take every mother heart because they do not have what I have. I have heart. These fighters are made men. They are fake to the core. What about Ryan Garcia calling you out? What about it? What would be the next best thing for you if a tank fight doesn't have a next? If that fight for some reason doesn't happen, which I don't see that happening, but if it doesn't happen, then I want to fight Teofimo Lopez at 140. They're just speaking. Why? Because I'm the king. The king stays king. You got to remember that. What do you think would happen if you fought? I mean, that's for everyone to come out and see. I know what I'm capable of doing to all these boys. What's that? Beating the out of them. All right, Tim. All them guys can come get it. What do you think about that? <laughs> That's what you want to hear from a young fighter. You know, you want to hear that. All, you know, all these guys, they have big egos. They've train, been training hard since they was, you know, little boys. But, you know, talk is cheap. Let's get these fights rolling, baby. You know, let's get it rolling. You know what's not cheap? What? Teofimo Lopez spending $50,000 on tickets tonight for his friends, family. Some oh. magicians, some musicians. Work out. Work out. And you know who else is on that list? Who? who? Oscar De La Hoya, Ryan Garcia's promoter. I believe that when I see Oscar De La Hoya walk up in here. All right. But the 50000 that's crazy. I don't know about that. Final round of this bout between Omar Rosario and Esteban Munoz. Munoz coming forward after taking the fifth round off. Work out, work out, work out. Rosario 7-0 with two knockouts. Oh, Munoz 6-1 with four knockouts coming in on a four-fight win streak. Shoot, the fight is, is up for grabs yes. right now. I mean, honestly, I don't know how these, these judges are scoring this foul, but this is a close fight, in my opinion. I have a 3-2 so far for Rosario, but we've mentioned those close rounds that could go either way. And there's an overhand right from Rosario. Now he follows that up behind the ear. Bring him out. low blow. Okay. A low blow may have taken something out of Munoz. It does. Definitely takes your legs when you get hit low, especially when you're tired already. You exerted a ton of energy. It's the last round, but right now you see Munoz stepping on the gas. Rosario showing some ring generalship right now and using his jab in good spots. Ooh, big shot right there, left hook. Both guys exchanged. One guy went downstairs, the other went upstairs. My goodness. 
This is getting heated. Mexico, Puerto Rico in the last 50 seconds of this sixth round. This is where that courage, that rivalry comes to, comes out between these two young men. All the hard work you've done in the gym and over the years. That's what you got to think about in these moments, these close fights. Got to understand that, hey, my career is on the line every time, every time I step foot in the ring. And it's the way that Munoz is Ooh. making Rosario go backwards, although Rosario lands a nice overhand right that the judges will take into account here in that sixth round. Can he be effective off the back foot? Low blow there from Munoz going on the hip. Instead of inviting more punches, Munoz should have thrown more punches as it was Rosario who went to the body there to punctuate a solid six round between these two fine gentlemen who gave us an exciting fight. I mean, and you mentioned it, Tim, it's all about what the judges will value in this fight. The aggressiveness of Munoz, the ring generalship of Rosario, the good jab, the body work. Yeah. I mean, there was a lot to, to take in. You know, at, at the end right there, you saw the cream rise to the top, and you saw that the amateur experience of Rosario come to the forefront. You know, he was able to be defensively sound in spots and catch Munoz on the way in when he made mistakes, when he got overly aggressive trying to close the gap on him. But, you know, this fight was extremely close, honestly. I don't know what the judges, what they like. Some judges like pressure. Some judges like the cleaner punches. Some judges like the boxer. You know, but both these guys, they stood and they traded in the center ring at times, trading hard shot after hard shot. It was a great, great uh, test for both of these young fighters. And honestly, I want to see both of them again against anybody, you know, and I wouldn't mind seeing them fight again. If, if it ends up being a draw or whatever it is, I wouldn't mind seeing it again. You heard the crowd. They were entertained. I was entertained. So why not, hey, do it again? Absolutely. And I, I think that Rosario pulled it off in that last, yeah. you know, last minute. I had it three to two. I think it'll end up being 58-56. But let's see what the judges have on their official scorecards mm -hmm. with Mark Shino. Ladies and gentlemen, after six rounds here inside Resorts World, we go to the judges' scorecards for the official decision. Tim Cheatham, Lisa Giampa, and Dave Moretti all score the bout 58-56. For your winner by unanimous decision, Omar New Era Rosario! That last round. <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> Munoz gave him all he could handle, but yep. <laughs> even his his uh, coach, Henry Ramirez, said, look, he's not working you. you. You're in these rounds, but, but you're not doing enough. But in that fourth round when he took off, that's the, that was yes. the problem right there. All right, we'll be back with more action. It'll be Duke Reagan, the Olympian.